Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord, everybody. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. Come on, can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? And give God thanks for bringing us to another day, another time when we can gather together for our annual family and friends day. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord. And we will bless the Lord at all times. And our praises shall continually be in our mouths. Let us remain standing as we come together with our call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in the house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. Let us be seated in the house of the Lord as we continue to give our Lord our praise on this morning. Amen? amen. And amen. amen.
God, we come before you this morning looking to you for all things. Father God, we thank you for another day. We acknowledge who you are, and there is none other than you. You are in control of everything, Heavenly Father. You know all and you see all, Heavenly Father. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to just look down upon us and forgive us for our sins by words, deeds, and thoughts. Sins of omission, sins of commission, Heavenly Father. We are just so sorry for the things that we have done that displease you, Heavenly Father, that grieves you and your son who died on Calvary's cross for us, Heavenly Father, to bring us back into your fold. And oh, Heavenly Father, we just give you all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you. We praise you. We love you, Heavenly Father. And we confess our sins to you and ask you to just please forgive us. And Lord God Almighty, we are not in charge of ourselves. 
and we are not in charge of this world. We know who is in charge, and we know that you're going to make things better. But we have to call upon you and let you know what we need and what we want, even though you know it, Heavenly Father. But just to call upon your name, first seeking your forgiveness for how we have failed you and grieved you. Heavenly Father, and just teach us to do what is right, to study your word, to learn of your word, that your word abide in us and we abide in your word. And Lord, we ask you to look down upon those that are sick, sick in hospitals and nursing homes and rest homes and in homes, Heavenly Father. Those that are sick in body, mind, and spirit, Heavenly Father. Because we know one day you're going to make everything all right, Heavenly Father. All right in your time. Not our time, but in your time. And we are on this journey together, but we are also on it alone. Because we are individuals, and we have to do what you want us to do as an individual. And Heavenly Father, just thank you for how you watched over us through this pandemic. And you brought us together again for this holy homecoming, Heavenly Father. And let us not take it for granted. You want us to be back in your house and serving you, Heavenly Father, in a new, new way. And let us know that we can be new creatures in Christ Jesus. Father God, just remember those that are out there struggling, who need a touch from you. If we can just say a word and just tell them about you and your son Jesus, it should make a big difference in their lives. We'll never know who we might turn around and bring him into the fold. And Father God, we need to start first in your house. In your house, and your house is our house, Heavenly Father. This body that we carry around with us, our mind and our spirit. And Heavenly Father, remember that we need to know that we might be the only Bible that people will read by our actions and our deeds. And we thank you for another day. These are our prayer and our blessing we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
Give ear to my ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to my voice of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you. And I will look up, for you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your, in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. And in Matthew. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling on a far country, to a far country who calls on his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, based on his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had two gained two more also. But he who had the one who had received the one talent went, dug a hole, and buried it in the ground and hid it and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord returned uh, the Lord, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he had received, so he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy uh, of your Lord. He also, who received two talents, came and said, Lord, you, deli you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you had not sown and gathering where you had not scattered seed. And I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there is what is yours. But the Lord answered, say unto him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, Take the talent from the one, from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will, he will be abundant. But from him who, has not, who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Thus ends the reading of our scriptures. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for God's children to work together in unity. We, the Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church family, welcome you to our Family and Friends Day. We are honored that you chose to worship with us because for two years we have been dealing with COVID, getting shots, 
taking temperatures, wearing masks, losing loved ones, being depressed, having brain fog, dealing with the economy, crime, and the list goes on. But we serve a God who watches over us, and he has kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. So let us magnify the Lord this morning, because he is worthy to be praised. We thank him for his love, for his peace, and understanding. We are blessed and honored this morning to have with us our morning speaker, Dr. Virgil L. Lattimore III, who will be introduced by our pastor, Reverend Dr. Barrow. We, if we have students here from Hood Theological Seminary, will you please stand? Praise the Lord. Thank you. We have one of our sisters who is here, Mrs. Katrina Cheek, former area leader. Thank you, Sister Cheek. And friends of Bethel members, we want all of you to know that we are happy that you are here. We want you to enjoy the service. Clap your hands, stomp your feet. If the Spirit says so, shout. In conclusion, I want to thank Pastor Barra, program participants, youth ushers, church members, musicians, Dr. Brenda Hampton, Sister Gail Fairley, men and women of Bethel who helped in various ways to make our Family and Friends Day a success. At the conclusion of the service, please join us in the fellowship hall for a delicious meal. God bless. My beloved, it is such a blessing to be in the house of the Lord on today and to look around and see so many of our friends who are here to celebrate in our Family and Friends Day. Turn around and look at somebody on the pew and say, good to see you, cuz. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and so to the officers, the members of Bethel Amy Church, and especially to Dr. Gertrude Faust, who served once again as a most excellent, most excellent, most excellent example of dignity and honor, who has served as our chairperson once again. Amen. Amen. It is my delight to be able to present to you Dr. Virgil Lattimore. Now, before I do that, I got to also honor my wife, Dr. Tawana Barrow. Yeah. Amen. She loves to blow me kisses from the floor. She knows it messes me up every time. <laughs> Amen. And also to my mother, who is here. Amen. It is my honor to present to you Virgil Lattimore, President Lattimore, Dr. Lattimore, Chaplain Lattimore, General Lattimore on today. I am sure that by now you have read his bio, his brief bio, printed in the back of the bulletin, and so I will not bore you with what you have already seen. However, I will share with you what, what's not printed on paper. I had the opportunity of meeting Dr. Lattimore 
in the year of 2014, we were gathered for a, an Episcopal meeting in Raleigh, North Carolina, at the Raleigh North Hilton. And the late Bishop DeVoe gave the opportunity to Dr. Lattimore to come and say a word about Hood Theological Seminary, which is the only seminary that is sponsored by the AME Zion Church. And so when Dr. Lattimore took to the floor, he only spent about five minutes talking to us, about a thousand folk gathered at the Raleigh North Hilton. And I will never forget his words, come to Hood, come to Hood, we'll be delighted to have. And so I met him in the hallway, and I said, Dr. Lattimore, I'm so glad to meet you. Um, and I've, I've been searching for a doctoral program, and I think Hood is it. And he said, well, come on, get your application in. And I made a promise to him in the hallway, you will have it by Thursday. And so sure enough, I got my application completed, drove down to Salisbury, North Carolina, and there I met Dr. Lattimore in the hallway. And he looked up, and I said, Dr. Lattimore, remember me? I'm the fellow who accosted you in the hallway at the AME meeting. I have my application. And he looked at me, he said, you are indeed a man of your word. Now go down here and go there and there, and he showed me exactly where I needed to go. And one thing that I can say about him being uh, my president, because not only was he my president as I matriculated through the doctoral program at Hood, but then when I inquired about teaching at Hood, he gave me my first job as a professor. Wow. My first job as a professor there at Hood Theological Seminary. And I have watched him since 2014. I've seen him at the school being firm and yet compassionate. I have seen him with his family being a loving husband, loving father. I've seen him with the students, including myself, being a wonderful mentor. And matter of fact, he is such the kind of man with all of his accolades and all of his accomplishments, you can even see him around campus picking up trash or cleaning faucets in the bathrooms. This is the kind of man who I respect and a man I honor today and one I am glad to consider to be my mentor and my friend, beloved. And so my beloved, with all further ado, I want to present to you the Reverend Dr. Virgil L. Lattimore III, our preacher for our annual Family and Friends Day here at Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church in the noble city of Greensboro, North Carolina. Let us stand as we receive our speaker. Hallelujah. And following this wonderful selection from this incredible praise ensemble, the next voice you will hear will be that of our speaker of the hour. God bless you, Bethel. Faster than a speeding bullet. Mm -hmm. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to reach tall buildings with a single bound. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Mm. Well, today, y'all, I found the real Superman in me. And that's Jesus. He's the Savior. And he's able. Anybody believe that this morning? That he's able to save the day. Come on, y'all.
my feet on a rock instead. And he gave me a song. That I could be him, but then he snatched me out and brought me in. I'm so glad I'm free from sin. Yeah, yeah. I know that yeah. Jesus saved the day. He saved the day. Jesus saved the day. I know that, that Jesus saved the day. Oh, oh. Jesus saved the day. I know that Jesus saved the day. Yeah, yeah. Jesus saved the day. I know that Jesus saved. That I couldn't be used, but then he snatched me out and brought me in. I'm so glad I'm free from sin.
Come on now. Jesus saved me today. Somebody ought to give God the praise and be saved your day. Stand on your feet and give God the highest praise because he saved your day. Hallelujah. I didn't feel good this morning, but because God saved the day, I feel good right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. I got to give him the glory. I got to give him the honor because he saved my day. He did it for my mama when she was in the hospital. But I come here to tell you today that Jesus, Jesus can save your day. Hallelujah. this morning for safe travel, giving thanks to God for the privilege of coming here to share with you God's word, to Pastor Barrow and his distinguished wife and mother, to the chair, Sister Faust of this program, and to this wonderful combo for Jesus. <laughs> the book of Psalm. In the fifth verse of Psalm 5, we find these words, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest workers of iniquity. That is folk in it, that ain't up to no good. And then the gospel of Matthew in the 25th chapter and verse 26 and 27, we find these words from the fourth or the fifth or fourth worker. But the master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew I reap where I have not sowed and gather where I have not winnowed then you ought to have invested my money with bankers and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. Those are tough words from, from an owner, isn't it? In your program, you have the title of my word this morning, Working for Jesus Incorporated. If you're wondering where that comes from, it could simply be a question. Who are you working for, ultimately? Who are you serving, ultimately? Those of you who are married, you know, you could say, I kind of serve with my spouse, my lover, if you got still have good jobs, you say, I work for my employer, Duke Power, or whatever. I work at a seminary. I work, I've been hired by the Board of Trustees, but I don't ultimately work for the Board of Trustees. Right. Dr. Barrow was telling you my habit of trying to straighten out stuff on campus, picking up paper or stuff. Well, the issue is, I'm not working for the board. Ultimately, I'm working for God. So you go home and ask you, what did the preacher preach about? You don't have to go to the bulletin and say, he said, I'm working for Jesus. You need to say who you're ultimately working for. Who are you, 
What are you doing all of this for? Why are you gathering here on Sunday morning? Why do you go to work? Do you just go for a paycheck? Do you just go for some accolades if you're retired? Do you just wait on that retirement check? Is that what you're ultimately working, waiting for? I hope you're ultimately waiting and working for Jesus, whose son has sent us. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks for today and for the privilege of coming in this, sharing in this family and friends celebration. Oh Lord, teach us to keep our priorities straight, to know that what we do ultimately, we do it for you and for the building of your kingdom here on earth. In the name of your son we pray, amen. Most of us have been at some point in our lives involved in working, employment, carried out for compensation, reward of personal satisfaction. If you're no longer, if you're no longer employed, your work is your sheer, you do whatever you do for sheer pleasure. You volunteer, you give your time to the community, maybe to share with others. You may visit friends and encourage them. You may get up in the morning and clean your house just for the sheer joy of cleaning the house. You may garden for the sheer pleasure of gardening. You may do repairs for the sheer joy of being able to fix something. If you're in school, your job is to go to school and to learn, to work. Sometimes I always learn that children also work. They'll work when, if you're, when you're young, at least you, if you remember those days, our work was play. Parents would tell us, get out of the house and go, go play. In other words, go to work. Go play, go enjoy what you're doing. And ultimately, if you're in a job or in a profession, if you enjoy what you're doing, it's like play, at least to me. Uh, Dr. Barrow can tell you, I enjoy my work as a president. I enjoyed my work as an Air Force chaplain. This wasn't always pleasant, but it was fulfilling. And so ultimately, what you do, like when you sing, you don't just sing to make people happy. You sing because it feels good. You sing because it feels good. You sing because you know you're making a difference. Even though I've worked several different kinds of jobs in my life, in my teen years I worked, seems like I've been working all my life. I used to sell papers on the corner. When I was in the elementary school, I sold papers on the corner, and then I had a evening paper, uh, uh, an evening paper out, the Charlotte News, and then I got a morning paper out. And I used to ask myself, as a 14-year-old, why am I getting up at four o'clock in the morning to go deliver papers? Well, the reason I did that because I can make a hundred dollars a week. <laughs> as a 14-year-old, so I enjoyed it. I've been in school a long time. I spent a number of years in school. And that's been a kind of work, but I enjoyed learning. And so it's not like it's drudgery. I just enjoy learning. So ultimately, the question I'm asking you this morning is why do you do what you do? What fulfillment do you get out of it? Why do you sing? Preacher, why do you preach? Choir, why do you sing? Musicians, why do you do what you do? Because you've been given a gift. It's like God has said in this scripture, God has invested something in you. In other words, and, and we'll walk through this scripture here briefly this morning, God has invested a something in you. God has given you a gift. And God wants to come back and realize what you have done with that gift. I hope you're not like the fifth worker who said, you know, I knew you were a taskmaster, so I just went home and buried my gift in the ground so that when you come back, I can give it to you the way you gave it to me. 
And the Lord said, I gave you that gift so that you could grow it. So that others can appreciate it. So this parable that Jesus tells follows one about the foolish. It, this scripture follows the one about the foolish and wise maidens. You read that scripture. The theme was not knowing about when God's going to return. We don't know when God is going to return and call us account. Now some of us will get called home before others. You don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know when that's going to happen. But ultimately God is going to call all of us home. And we don't know when that's going to be. So the scripture says do what? Watch and be prepared. The event is the unusual because God seems to, again in this scripture about the workers, God seems to be in the role of an employer. And it might be a stretch to describe God as the president and the CEO. You know, God is, is the president and the CEO. So the president and CEO said, I'm going on a trip. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to charge you with some responsibility. I'm going to give you some responsibility. I'm going to give you some responsibility. So when I come back, I want to know what you've done with what I've given you. This man, it could be a woman, has resources. And he wants to grow his assets. So he apparently was a good manager. He delegates his authority. He diversified his inventory. It is clear to me that this owner represented God. Now that may be a stretch to say that God is like the president. I think God is the president of creation. God is the CEO of creation. In other words, and, and, and you forgive me if this doesn't fit, God is the kind of God that don't take no mess. And you know that song, Papa don't take no mess. So you read the text. The text tells us that the owner was not happy with the worker number three. And when we hear the worker's voice and what worker number one said and what worker number two did, we think it's all about the Benjamins, not about the money. It wasn't all about the money. It was more than just about the money. It was, wasn't more about the ship coming in or the bling. It was about two things, service and relationships. Service and that's what work is. Good work is about service and relationships. Worker number one and number two took some risks. They battered and they traded and they may have wheeled and dealed. They attempted to make what had been given to them better. So my question to you this morning, what are you making better with what God has given to you? What are you making better with what God has placed in your hands? They worked, they went out, they utilized their skills in service to the mission of what the owner had given them. They acted. So I question again. I'm asking a lot of questions. How are you acting? How are you acting with what God has given to you? Now listen to the words of worker number three. Master, I knew you were a hard man or woman, <laughs> reaping where you do not sow, gathering where you do not winnow. So I was afraid. I went out and hid your talent in the ground. Now we know sometimes you put things in the ground and they grow. Huh? You put seeds in the ground, they grow. You know, you put plants sometimes in the ground and they grow. But we're not, we're not just seeds. You know, we're, God has given us tangible gifts. You can't put a tune in the ground. You can't put service in the ground. In other words, he was afraid and he was paralyzed and led him to do nothing. To do nothing. He took no real action, I imagine, that it took him all of five minutes, all of five minutes to dig a hole and put his talent in the ground. How much effort did that take? To dig a hole 
and put your talent in the ground. You know, if we'd ask someone like Stevie Wonder, Come on, what did you do with the gift that God gave you? And Stevie would say, well, I, 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 I took my gift and put it in the ground. No growth, no productivity, no action. Get out of my face. And in fact, it's likely the economy, you know, service and work is precious. God gave us a family. Most of us have a family. I know I've, the, the new president of Livingstone College that was named a couple of days ago, if you read, read his, his bio, and, and, and he, he came to our campus to speak uh, in the spring, he, he spent 17 years in the foster care system. 17 years in the foster care system. He graduated out of the foster care system and was then essentially homeless after he turned 18. But someone took an interest to him and sponsored him to go to college. In other words, they didn't bury his talent, his gifts. All of us have them. And so ultimately, brothers and sisters, I've come this morning to say to you, work and do the work of the God that has placed gifts in your hands, in your hearts, and in your head. And two of those gifts is love. All of us can love. All of us can love. All of us can also serve some level. It doesn't matter what it is. Find something that you are dedicated to and you do it for the sheer joy of being able to do it. And the work is never finished. Our work is never finished until God says, come on here and I want to see what you've done to the temple that I gave you. What have you done in the temple that I've given you and it's intangible and it's meaningful God bless you brothers and sisters I close with again the question I started who are you working for who are you serving and who do you expect to reward you God bless you Amen. We can do better than that, can't we? We have heard a word. We've heard a word. Who are you working for? Hallelujah. Amen. My beloved, what a blessing it is to hear a word from the Lord that will challenge us, that will sincerely challenge us to really think about who it is that we serve and work for. And if you do not know by now, there is a man from Galilee, Mary's baby. Some will call him the Rose of Sharon. Some will call him the Bright and Morning Star. And others will just simply call his name Jesus. And I have a very simple question for you. Have you met Jesus? If you have never met Jesus, then simply raise your hand. And, and, and I can tell you that you, you know if you've met him because you can never be the same. Coming in contact with Jesus will always change your life. And if you can confess to that, Pastor, I have never met Jesus because I see no difference in my life. I'm the same way I've always been. Then, my beloved, you're in the right place at the right time. God knew you were going to be here before you did. This is your time to say, yes, Jesus, I'm ready to meet you today. 
And if you're looking for that relationship, come on. We offer Christ to you, my brother. We offer Christ to you, my sister. And let him change your life. Seeing that no one has moved, I assume that I'm surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Hallelujah, somebody. So this is a family affair today. Everybody in the household of faith and in the ark of safety. Whereby should you close your eyes for the last time on this side, you will wake up in glory on the other side. Oh, what a blessing it is for the family of God to gather. But the next appeal I have for you today, maybe you are looking for a church home. Well, my beloved, Bethel is a hospital for sinners, never a museum for saints. And if you're looking for a church home, we would love to have you. Just come on, step out where you are. We'll be glad to receive you. And then the last appeal today, if you have a prayer concern, just raise your hand wherever you are. Just, just raise your hand. Just, just raise your hand. Just, just raise your hand wherever you are. And we're going to pray together. Can we do that? From wherever you may sit, we're just going to, we're just going to touch and agree in the air. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, and our God, we come trusting not in our own righteousness, but believing, oh, God, that when two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. And God, your word tells us that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. But it, again, God, it's not in our own righteousness do we stand, but we come, God, trusting in your righteousness, trusting in your goodness. For your goodness and mercy that will follow us all the days of our lives. God, and we thank you for things being as well as they are. We thank you for looking beyond our faults and attending to our every need. We thank you for blessing us in spite of ourselves. And God, and we acknowledge right now that there are some things that only you can work it out. As the choir sang early, God, turn it over to Jesus and he can work it out and we believe oh God right now in the name of Jesus that all circumstances and all situations that are unlike you God will be made straight mountains that are too high to climb will be made low valleys that are too low to crawl through will be made level all because, God, we're trusting all circumstances in, in your hands. Bless us collectively. Bless us individually. And we count it all done. For we are trusting in the one who is able to keep us from falling. Jesus, our Christ. And let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. Amen. And amen. Amen, everybody. To God be the glory for the great things that the Lord has done. And now, my beloved, as we are still in a part of worship, I do want to just share with you that I just have one real quick announcement on today, just one very quick announcement, and that the official board will meet on this upcoming Wednesday in person and on Zoom. We'll meet at 6 o'clock. I just need to say that out loud so that you may govern yourselves accordingly. Amen? Amen. Now, we're not going to belabor the day because I know some of y'all came with an appetite. You heard that the kitchen at Bethel was open, and you came from far and wide just to see if we still know how to get down in the kitchen. And yes, indeed, y'all, the, the pots have been singing because we knew you were coming. And who's our special guest? You are. And we're so delighted to serve you on today. And before we go and break bread with one another, we also need to take the moment to uplift our tithe and our offering. So I'm asking our young people who decided today as they came back to stand on the wall that they want to collect the offering on today. Amen. So I'm asking if those who are assisting, come on. Amen. Just come on to the front and then you're going to work your way to the back. Amen. 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 Look at those two tall gentlemen. All righty. Y'all know what to do. Amen. There you go. 
Amen. And as they are um, handing the baskets to you, you may uh, take the system and pass your envelope down to the person on the end if you chose to do it that way. Amen. And as I do just a little teaching about our tithe, the tithe is 10% off all that increase. And the offering is that which is above the tithe. And we have a number of different ways in which we give in the church. Some who prefer to just put their money in an envelope, as you see right now. But there are those others who choose to use the electronic devices in order to, um, uh, you're not paying the church, you're giving an offering to the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen. Amen. And they're going to be done very quickly. And then for those who are saying, well, I'm not ready to drop it in there just yet. That's all right. They were still going to be at the back of the church when service is over, where you may do so. Amen. Amen. So we're asking now. All righty. Move rather quickly. Praise ye the Lord. And Dr. Hamden, if you could just give us a little traveling music. Amen. And we thank God for all of your charitable giving on today. And you know, as we oftentimes say in the church, we can't beat God's giving no matter how hard we try. Amen. And just bear with our young people as they're getting back into the habit of collecting. Amen. Amen. Just bear with them just a little bit. It's been three years since we've done offering this way. It's been three years. Three years. Amen. It's been, it's, it's been three years since we've done offering this way. So all it is is just exercising our muscles and doing what we know how to do. Just It just requires a little patience. Amen. Just a little patience. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you again, everybody. Amen. And ushers, when you are ready, bring those baskets to the front that we may bless them. Amen. And again, church family, we thank you so much for your patience. It's been three years since we've been able to do it this way. And we thank you for your kindness. Amen. Let us all stand as they come to the front. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the tithe, that which is 10% off all thine increase, and the offering, that which is above the tithe. Use them, O oh God, to your glory. God, bless the ones who bring the tithe, and God, embrace, bless those who have it not in their hands, but have it in their hearts. Bless them as well. This we ask in Jesus' name. And let the redeemed of the Lord say amen, amen. and amen. 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 You may return to your seats. You may be seated. Well, my beloved, again, we thank you for being with us on today. What a blessing it has been for us to gather. And the way in which the kitchen has been set up for those, some folk may want to take their trays and go, and that is fine. But we have the room adorned just for you as you are our special guest. We had uh, professional cleaners to come in to deep clean the church and deep clean the kitchen. And everything is spit, spot, and span, and everything just set just for you. And then you had Sister Patricia. Whoa, man. Where's, where's Sister Patricia? Where? She going already. That is one hard-working sister. You hear me? And she worked alongside of Sister Loretta and worked alongside of Sister Giles and they made sure that everything was ready for you to come today. And so if you choose to dine with us, please be seated, and we'll join, join you shortly that we may bless the offering. But again, we want to thank you. We thank you so much for being here on today. And so as a part of our protocol, after the benediction, the pulpit guests will proceed down the aisle and turn to the right, and then the rest of the congregation may follow. Amen? Amen. So let us now stand to our feet. And I want you to repeat after me. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in his hands. Say, neighbor, I know that you can make it. 
I know that you can stand. No matter what may come your way, your life is in his hands. Amen. May the God of love call you to not just work, but to serve and invest your gifts for his coming glory. In the name of the we, God, we pray. Amen.